Hey everyone, welcome back to the project. So what we're doing today is we're working on one of several steps that we need to complete in order to allow our app to allow users to add favorite places to the map and really more importantly to share them with other people. So this is going to require making a series of changes that we're going to work on together. And the first one that we have to make is we actually have to change the server to allow a client to add, be able to add a place to the map. Now I'm going to open up my server code. Right now, the only thing that our server knows how to do is to have clients request the places that are on the map. So if I go down to my route handler, uh, this is only used during startup, reset is used during testing. This is the only really meaningful route that the server provides, which is you can request slash places and you get back this JSON that has information about all the favorite places that the server knows about. What we're going to do now, or we're going to start working on, is we're going to allow the server to provide the client with the ability to add a place to the map by accepting a new type of request. So places is what's called a get request. That's used by the HTTP protocol to allow clients to retrieve information from the server. But there's another type of request that's very common in the HTTP protocol, which is called a post. Anytime you click a button, on the internet and something happens, like when you run code to grade for you know, a CS144 website, when you um, upload a file, when you buy something, a lot of times what's happening is various types of post requests, which are moving data from your machine to the server that's located somewhere else. So get moves data from the server to you, Posts move, post requests move data from you to the server. So what we need to do is allow the, the server to accept this type of request, parse it properly, and add it to the places that are shown on the map. We have a test case to guide you through this process. I'm gonna go over here and go ahead and run it to, just to get us started. So this is test zero. It's the first test that you should work on as you begin work on MP1. So I'm gonna run this test and you're gonna see that it fails. And it fails right here at the first request that it tries to make. Now, one of the things about this test case, and this is common in tests, is that it tests a bunch of invalid requests first, and then it tests a working request. So it actually tests a bunch of requests that are supposed to fail to make sure they fail properly, and then it tests a request that's supposed to work. When you're developing, sometimes you don't want that. You want to test the request that's supposed to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out a big chunk of this, right? You can go through and you can see um, the the commentary, and then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna leave just this first good request that is supposed to complete. So I'm gonna comment out stuff at the bottom. I'm gonna comment out the stuff at the top, and all I have left, and this is just stuff that this test needs. This is a UUID identifying uh, Gracie. Uh, we'll talk about what that is in a little bit. Um, and all this is doing is it's gonna test an okay request. So this is a request that should succeed. So let me go ahead and run the test suite again. Now, if I run the grader now, I'm gonna get warnings or errors because I've modified the test suite, but it's okay to modify the test suite during development as long as we know how to get the contents of the test suite back when we're done, which we do, which is just take out the comments. Um, all right, so this is still failing. If I go down here, I'll see that it's failing on line 118. That's in this helper method. Uh, but what's happening is it's trying to make a certain request to the server. It's expecting that request to work and return a 200, er a 200 code, which indicates that everything's okay, that request was successfully processed, and instead I'm getting this 404. Now, if you watch the debugging uh, walkthroughs, which I'm sure everybody did, uh, you know that the 404 means that I ended up down here. And that's because this path and method did not match any of the methods in my dispatch tree. And in fact, if I put some uh, debugging here, uh, what we'll be able to see, and I run this, um, is that the request is being made for the path favorite places. These are used during testing startup. This is favorite places post. So that's interesting. It's the first time we've seen this post request where I'm moving data to the server. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is add a branch to my routing tree to this if else statement to handle this. So I'll say else if path dot equals um, favorite place and method dot equals uh, post. Then now I'm going to write a helper method for this. I, su I suggest that you do this as well because this is actually going to get a little long. It's not a terrible amount of code, but uh, we do have some work to do in this method. 
So I'm going to go up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at this method. One of the things that we're training you to do in this checkpoint is also kind of uh, mimic code that's already in the project. When you start working on a big software project or really any software project, usually you're not the first person working on it. There's a bunch of other people who have been writing code before you got there. And uh, it's important to understand how to be respectful and sort of follow along and not make a bunch of silly changes to things and work within the style and the idioms that other people have established. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna essentially look at the get places and I'm gonna write something similar. Um, so I go down here. Uh, now, I don't know if I need to throw this exception, so I'll just take that part off. Um, what I call this is really up to me. I'm gonna call it post favorite place. Um, and for now, what I'll do is I'm going to just take this here, uh, take this code, and I'll add the header to why not? This is kind of important. Uh, so I'm just gonna return a code that indicates that the request worked. Um, and that, this may not be the best thing to do, uh, but this is okay, this, is just, this will get me started. And let's see what happens here, right? So now down here, I'm gonna return post favorite place. So I wrote a method, I mean, this is stuff we know how to do. I wrote a method, I'm calling the method. Let's run the test again, see what happens now. So you'll see what's gonna happen is, now something different failed. And this is why I left this uh, assertion in here, which is really important. So here's what's supposed to happen. After a successful post to this favorite place route, there's supposed to be a new favorite place on the map. The server is supposed to know about, in this case, a new favorite place. Before I ran this, I had, you know, uh, places count, I think is 58. That's the number of places that are in that CSV. I had that many places. Now I just added a new one. So I should have 59. Instead, I still have 58 because this route hasn't done anything yet, right? So that's okay. This is what we're going to work on. Um, but this gives us a sense of sort of how the test suite worked. So in this case, it made a request that it expected to succeed. The request did succeed because I put in just a return 200 here. Um, but the request didn't accomplish what it was supposed to. And so that's what we need to start working on now. Um, and actually, you know, most of my suggestion with, for how to approach this is to leave the test suite like this. And most of the work is going to be getting this one test to work. Then uncomment the rest and you'll figure out how to deal with all the quarter cases because we're going to send you a bunch of bad requests that, don't, that, that aren't set up properly. Okay, now let's go back here. The, one of the critical differences between get and post, when you make a get request, really the only piece of information that the client provides to the server is the URL. It's that path. And that can have extra parameters in it and stuff like that, stuff that we're not going to necessarily cover uh, in this course. But that's really, you, you provide the server with that path, you know, slash places, and it does the rest. With post, the idea is you're moving data to the server. So the body of a post request is very important for the processing of that request. And so this method needs access to the request itself. So you'll see the request is actually passed to my dispatch method, but currently it's not passed to the post favorite place method. So I need to change that. So I need to pass that as a parameter. This is going to fail because I haven't added it up here, uh, but I'll do final uh, recorded request request. Um, and so now I have access to this request. Why is this important? Let me show you, because um, what's in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do println request um, dot get body. So I'll try this first and let's run this and see what happens. So if I go down here and I see, I see this post and I see some size information and then there's text and this text looks promising. It looks almost like JSON for a place that's got an ID. It looks like it has a name. This is cut off. Um, now, it, you know, this is one of those sort of magic things that, uh, you know, you, you could Google around for for a while and, and, and not... Uh, figure out, but what I need to do is call this read UTF-8 method. This is going to give me the body of the post request, right? The, the contents that I want. So let's go ahead and, and do this. And now, lo and behold, look what the client is sending me. This is in the contents of the request. So the client made a request, that request traveled over the interwebs to the server. And what does it contain? It contains JSON. And this is JSON that matches the shape of our place object. It has an ID, it has a name, it has a latitude and a longitude and a description, 
Uh, in this case, Gracie's favorite place is the dog park. Those are not the right latitude and longitude for the dog park. That's okay. All right. So at this point, we've sort of accomplished our first task, which is we have a route on the server and we have and I, we have an understanding of how to get at the data that the client is sending to us. In the next walkthrough, what we'll do is we'll outline what we need to do with this data, and then we'll talk about all of the different corner cases that we have to handle. So we've got the data, we've learned a little bit recently about deserialization, so we're in a good place to kind of do the right things here, um, but we'll sort of perform an outline, lay things out step by step, and talk a little bit about what needs to happen so that you can wrap up this test case. I'm not gonna say this is easy. Uh, this is probably one of the more challenging parts of the MP, but you can do it.